We've been looking at several different kinds of one-dimensional arrays so far in this uh, video series, but there's one particular type of one-dimensional array that we need to sp uh, pay special care to, and that's the character array. The character arrays have their own kind of unusual behavior sometimes, and they can really cause you a lot of frustration if you don't know what's really going on with them. So uh, we're going to take a look with this, uh, this program and in this video, we're going to take a detailed look at what character arrays are and how they behave and how you can avoid some of the issues that are, uh, may, pro may crop up in your uh, programming. Well, okay, this program, we are just going to start with this shell. And I've declared several things at the top, a lot of variables here. So um, I've got just some ordinary character variables, uh, CH1, 2, 3, and 4, and I've initialized them to uppercase A, B, C, and D. And here is a character array. So the type is a character, and it is an array. So you can see that this has 15 elements. And if it's a character, that means there are 15 characters in the array. You can initialize a character array by using a string. So this will initialize the array letters to CS blank 121. And though it isn't visible here, at the end, after the one, there is an additional character that's included as part of a string, and that's a backslash zero. So whenever you are writing out anything that is a string, then it always will have a backslash zero at the end. So in this case, we have CS space 121, that's six characters. There will be a seventh character added, and that will be the backslash zero. The backslash zero has a special meaning, and that is it's a string terminator. So when C out, in, uh, encounters a backslash zero, then it understands it's at the end of the string. So we'll see that coming up. I've got two other character arrays. Uh, this one is called items. It's uh, 15, and it is not initialized at all. And I've got one called alphabet. So you can tell we'll put the, uh, the uh, 26 letters of the alphabet in there. And it's 27 because I'm going to leave space to put a backslash zero here as well. And you'll see why we need that coming up. I've declared a short integer CH5. You might not have seen a short integer declaration before. That's just an integer that's 16 bits long. All right, so a regular integer is going to be um, 32. A short integer is going to be 16. Nothing special about that, really. I could have just made it an integer, and it would still be okay. Then I've got a couple of strings. Um, name 1 is set to Brianna, and name 2 is set to Roger. Now, here we go. Let's look at some character array examples, and let's begin just by assigning some values to the items array here. So let's get a few lines of code, and let's put some values into one of these character arrays. I'll paste the code here, and I'm just going to initialize item sub zero with ch1. So that just puts the capital A in as the first index of the array items. And then we'll put ch2 in position one or index one, and we'll put ch3 into index number two. So that just stores uppercase letters A, B, C, and D into the items array. Items is declared to be 15, so what about the other 12? Well, we don't know what those are. We didn't give them a value, and we cannot assume they're set to zero. So we are, uh, it's unknown what those are going to be. We could consider them to be garbage. All right, so whenever you don't initialize something, then you can assume that it's going to be some data that you probably don't really want in there. Now, I'm going to print out the array items. Now, as it turns out, if you're using the C out statement, then you can print out all 15 characters of a character array. You just have to put the name of the character here. So with C out, the name of an array, you can print the whole thing. It will print all the characters that are in there. So this will print out what we have stored in items, and it will show us what else is in there in those remaining 12 locations. Now, as you can see, we have a lot of stuff in this uh, program, so I'm going to use the system pause, since I'm uh, running on Windows, to uh, stop the program as we proceed through here. So I'll add a I'll, I'll put a system pause in right here. So there's a system pause. Now let's uh, compile and run the program. Now let's look at the output. 
All right, so here we go. Let's move this down so we can see that output line. Um, we have the character array examples printed out, of course. Initial data and array items. And then, and then look what, look at what we get. Well, we get the A, B, and the C. Okay, so we know that's good. We put a uh, put in A, B, and C there. So when we print it out, we, then we would expect to see it. But we've got a lot of other stuff showing up. That's really weird looking stuff, and. We would like to not have that, and I'll show you how we cannot get that coming up. But first of all, let's count how many characters we have as we go across. So the items array is only 15. We have 15 characters here. So I'm going to just use my arrow key and move across. So that's one, two, whoops, didn't want to do that. Um, that's one, and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15 stops right there. So we have the A, B, C, and then we have another uh, 13 of these odd-looking characters. And it doesn't stop there. It keeps going. So this would be 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Now we get CS 121. Okay, well, where'd that come from? Well, what's going on here? is that we are printing out a character array that does not have a terminating symbol in there. We don't have the, um, the backslash zero to terminate this string of characters. So whenever you use a C out statement, it will continue to try to print everything in memory until it encounters something that is a backslash zero. And by the way, the code for a backslash zero is just all zeros. So it prints out more than 15 characters, and it picks up some additional information that happens to be stored close by in memory. Well, I imagine that you don't really want to see this kind of thing when you're printing out a character array. So here's what you need to do. So let's just go ahead and stop the program. We just printed out from the see out statement from this line right here. Now. I'm going to add a string terminator. That is that backslash zero that I talked about. So this is one of the oddities about a character array that you need to be aware of. So let's just add in a, an assignment statement here to put this backslash zero into the items array. So I'll paste that in here. And here is that string terminator. Okay, so let's pick up at items index number three. That's the next one after we put the C in here. Now, if you want to put a character into a character array, it must be, hey, a character. So we need a single quote around this thing. Okay, so single quote, a backslash zero, and a single quote. Well, okay, that's kind of weird too. We are not putting two characters in there. There's a backslash, there's a zero, but that's interpreted as a special code. So the backslash zero is just, as we can see here, uh, in the pop-up, if you can, if I can keep that on screen, I guess I can't. Anyway, it's all zeros. So that's the string terminator. All right, now let's print out the items array again. So we'll print out items with the string terminator, then we'll print the array items, and we'll see what we get. Okay, so now we still have our system paused down here. So uh, we're, we, it, it, the program will stop at that point. So let's build and run the program. Now we have the output. Let's bring it over. So now you can see both of these outputs. So without the string terminator, we got a bunch of garbage on the screen. When we put the string terminator in, we get A, B, C, and then it stops. It stops because C out has, has encountered the backslash zero, which is the terminator indicating we do not want to print out the remainder of the array. So that's, uh, that's something to put in your little bag of tricks to remember so that uh, if, if you're dealing with a, a character array and you only want to see what's in the character array, then you really should initial, initialize the whole array to zeros before you put anything in it because the code for the backslash zero is zero. So that's uh, one of the things about character arrays. Now let's move on and look at some other properties. Let's look at entering some data for a character array from the keyboard. And you can use ordinary CN in order to do that. So we'll say, uh, print to the screen this message, CN, enter a series of letters. So we can type in 
as many letters as we want as long as we don't exceed the number that's allocated to the array. So if we want to uh, put some data into the array letters, then letters is uh, 15 characters long, and it already has CS121 in it, so if we put something new in there, in there it will overwrite that. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. We can enter a series of letters. So right here, let's just put an ordinary CN statement in there, and we'll enter some information for letters, some different information that will replace the CS121. So I'll paste the line of code here, and let's move the system pause and those end lines. Let's move it down past that so that we don't go any further through our program. All right, so this says that we're just going to use CN and the variable letters. Okay, we don't need square brackets. We don't need to read them in one at a time. If you use CN, then you can type in multiple letters. So now let's run the program, and we'll enter some letters, and then we'll print that back out to the screen. We'll bring the output window over here, and you see we have the prompt to enter a series of letters. So with the CN, you can read in characters into a character array uh, as you would pretty much any other kind of information. So let's type something in for this. I'll just type some letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, and uh, say 1, 2, 3, 4. Now when I hit Enter, those will be read by CN, and then we'll print them back out to the screen right there. So I hit Enter, and then it prints out the letters array contains A, B, C, D, E, F, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's really easy. If you have a character array, you can enter in data with CN. So that's pretty straightforward. Now let's look at a different way that you can enter information into a character array. Um, perhaps I should explain this next line. Uh, there's a CN ignore here. Um, I'm using that to clear out anything that might be left in the input buffer. As you know, whenever you type something in and you hit the enter key, it puts a backslash in or an end of line character in there. And uh, I don't want that to carry forward to the examples I'm doing as I proceed through the program. So each time I do some examples, then I'm going to use this ignore to clear out anything in the buffer, and that will give me a clean input for the next example I want to show you. Alrighty, well, uh, let's reorganize the code a little bit, and let's look at a different way to input data into a character array. You can also use get with cn, and you can input multiple characters. We, uh, we saw in an earlier video that you could use cn.get and you could get a single character. Well, if you have an array, you can also use cn.get to get multiple characters to go into a character array. So let's paste the code here, and this illustrates how you can do that. So we have cn.get as before. This time, this first argument that must be an, a character array. If it's just a character, it can only hold one, one character. So this has to be a character array for this to work. And then I'm going to input up to 15 characters. Now, the uh, dimension of the array letters is 15, recall. So that's the maximum number of characters that we can put in there. So if I had more than 15 here, then it would just pretty much ignore it. I don't think it would cause an error. But if I put 20 here, then I, if I try to type in 20 characters, only 15 would actually be taken because that's the size of the array. Alrighty, well, let's, uh, let's demonstrate this. Let's uh, compile the program and run it, and we'll input with cn.get. We'll print the uh, array back out again. Then we'll clear the input buffer, and we'll pause in, uh, as we um, complete this example with cn.get. Now we'll bring over the output window. So this is the prompt that uh, we use to type in data for cn. So we'll just get past that. I'll just put abcd here. And then we are at the prompt to use cn.get, where we will enter a string of, a of array letters. So we'll type in some data for it. So let's use a, a b, c, d, e, f, one, two, three, four. So when I put that in and I just hit enter, it'll be printed back out to the screen. So you can see then that this is another technique that we, that we can use. If you want to use cn.get, then you can. Um, the advantage of this, of course, is that if you type in some spaces, then get will get the spaces, whereas just a regular CN will not. So let's uh, also demonstrate that. Now let's bring over the output window again, 
And um, I've already entered the data for the CN prompt, so that moves us down here to cn.get. And it's important. This might be really um, a really good reason to use cn.get because it will read white space. So I can type in like ABC, and I hit a couple of spaces, one, two, three, get another space, and then, you know, TYOX, whatever it might be. So now when I hit the enter key, then the cn.get will read this information in, including the spaces in between. So it prints the information back out again. So the letters array now contains ABC, a couple of spaces, one, two, three, a space, and TYOX. So uh, cn.get allows you to input white space, whereas just ordinary CN is not going to let you do that. Well, you've seen that you can output an entire character array with C out, but you can also output an array just one character at a time if we put a loop in here and just use an index. So let's paste the code in to do that. And here's just a little for loop. And I'm going to go ahead and move down my uh, system pause. And we'll put it afterwards. Now let's look at what's going on here. If we have a one-dimensional array, then obviously we can just um, go through the array one character at a time using an index. So letters, we have uh, 15 of them, so we can just make a little loop for that. So K is an index 0 to begin with. It goes up to 14. And our C out statement is just going to print out the information that's in letters. Now, I'm, um, I'm going to put one letter per line just to separate this, this from the way we output letters up here. When you do a C out with letters, it prints everything on the same line, and that's probably what you really want. But to show you that you can go through and access each letter individually, I'm just going to pull out one letter at a time and print it to the screen. So now let's build our program and run it, and we'll look at this output from the for loop here. Now we have the output. Let's bring that over. So I've already typed in the uh, A, B, C, D, E, F for the first C, N statement. And now we're down to the cn.get. So we'll type in information here, and then we'll print it out with the cout statement and then with the for loop. So I'm just going to type in some uh, values, a, b, c, d, w, q, x, 4, 5, 9, um, z. Okay, so let's, that's some information. So that's going to go into the letters array. So I'll hit uh, enter. And the cout statement, we printed that out here. Okay, the letters array contains that, which is what we just typed in, and that came from this statement here, the C out statement. Now we're going to print out the contents of letters using the for loop. So that's what we have one letter at a time shown here. So this prints out A, B, C, D all the way up to the last character Z, one at a time. So you can, of course, print out the information in a character array by using the indices. You could print the whole thing or you could pull out particular indices and print just single characters if you want to do that. Now uh, let's continue with some further examples and ways you have to handle character arrays. We want to be able to copy and compare information that's in a character array. So how do we do that? Well let's add some code and we will look at the special way you have to do that. Now, one thing you might want to try, or might think about trying, would just be to assign one to the other. So if we wanted to copy letters and put it into items, you might think we could just do an ordinary assignment statement. But as you can see, that is not valid. We have to use a special function called strcpy. So this does not work. Uh, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and cut and paste the system pause to move it down. And let's look at how we can really do a, a copy of an array. So let's remove this line and let's put in the one that works. So let's paste in this, this code. And if you are dealing with a character array, then you'll need to remember these functions. So there are several. Uh, string copy, strcpy. That's what you need if you want to copy a character array from one array to another. Now, the underscore s, this is a um, what you really should be using. That's a secure string copy. So the older version of just uh, strcpy is considered to be 
uh, vulnerable to, uh, to hacking. So you don't want to use that one. You want to use the secure version, which is a more secure version, obviously. And the way you use it is you list the array where you want the data to go first and the one it's coming from second. So this will copy letters into items. Okay, then we are just going to print those things out. All right, so um, let's do that. And we see here that we do have the C out statement items equal so we can tell where we are. And then we will pause the program right there. So let's run the program and look at this copy example. The program is running, so let's bring our output window over here. I've already typed in the A, B, C, D, E for the C, N statement that appeared first. Now we are being prompted with cn.get to type in some information. So I'm going to type in some information here. Let's do A, B, C, X, $34, pound sign, at, and uh, B, Y. Okay, so that's just some random information that I'm typing in. And that will be read in, and it will be, will be placed in the array letters by cn.get. Now, before I hit Enter, what's going to happen here is we're going to print out the letters information with this for loop. So that will print out one character per line vertically. Then I'm going to do the string copy, and I'm going to copy that letters array that we just uh, typed in right here. I'm going to copy it into items, and then I'm going to print out items. So now let's, let's go ahead and hit the Enter key and see what we get. So here it is. Um, the letters array contains that. So this is the information I just typed in. Then the for loop printed it all out vertically. And then we are going to copy the array letters into the array items and print that out. So when I print out the items array, you can see now it contains the same information that the letters array has. So that's how you can copy one character array to another. So don't forget str copy underscore s. We can also compare arrays. So now let's look at how to do that. We can compare two character arrays. Okay, so I'll put some space here and let's go get the code to see how we do that. So I'll paste that code in here and it is quite, uh, quite long. We just have an if, else, if, else if statement going on here. And I'm going to show you the strcmp um, function. Okay, that's a string compare, and we probably have to use an underscore s, so I'll check that when I compile and run the program. But this is the other important function if you're dealing with a character array. Okay, string copy is one of them, string compare is the other. The only result that you can get with the string compare is less than, greater than, or equal to. So those are the only options when you're doing the string compare. So if it turns out that the, um, the result of this compare is negative, as a negative value, that means it's less than zero. Okay, so if the string compare function returns a negative value, then that means that the array on the left side is less than the array on the right. Well, what does that really mean, uh, one array is less than the other? That, that could mean you can interpret it in different ways. What it really means is you know, our ASCII codes are going to be less here than they are here, but that's not the whole story. Uh, it's alphabetical as well. So if this thing over here is alphabetically uh, ordered less than or previously to this one, then this would be true. We get a negative value. If the two are exactly equal, we jump down to the bottom here. So if this array items is exactly the same as the array letters, then the string compare function returns zero. And the only other thing is greater than. So if the string compare function returns a positive number, then that means that the items array is greater than the letters array. So this kind of... Um, you know, kind of all boils it down into one statement here. So we're going to use our two arrays, items and letters, and we're going to compare them to see the result of, um, of these comparisons. We're going to see how the, uh, the compare works. Now, as it turns out, we did a string copy right there, so we would expect that the two to be equal, 
So that means we would expect this part of our if else if statement to be true. All right, so now let's uh, compile the program. And first of all, run it to see if it's going to ask us to do a string compare underscore s. So I'll do that first. I'll let you know what happens. Now we have the output, so let's bring the window over. So um, I have typed in the first example once again, and we're at cn.get where, where we are putting information into the array letters. And I, I just typed in I like C++, and I do. So let's hit Enter. And we get the output that you've seen already. We output using the C out statement. We output using the uh, loop. And then we get down here. So we have, by virtue of copying the information from the items array, the letters array, into the items, we get that items is the same as letters. I like C++. Then we get to the comparison part. So we have the code here where we, com we are comparing things. And you can see that the output is I like C++ is equal to I like C++. So we do indeed activate this last statement here where we get the string comparison function returning the value 0 for us. Now, let's make one, uh, let's do a different example using this same uh, if statement here. And let's put in, before we get to that, let's set some new values for our items and letters so that they're different. So let's do that, and then we'll compile and run the program again. So what we want to do is go through this if statement a second time and with, with a different example, not really a second time, but I want to change it up just to show you a different way to do this. So I want to reset the array items and letters so that they're different. We copied them up here so we know they're equal. So what happens when they're not equal? Now, if you want to reset items and letters, you might be tempted to do this. We might want to just take the name of the array and then, and then set it to a string. So you can tell already that there's a red wiggly line there, and that, was, that means that that is an error. So we can't just do a nice assignment like that as, um, as an assignment statement in the program. Okay, you can do it when you declare an array, like we did up here. Okay, you can do this when you're initializing the array. You cannot do it as an assignment statement down here in your program. So it does not like that. So what we have to do instead, of course, is we have to use the string copy. So let's use the string copy to reset items and letters. So let's put a couple of lines of code in here to do that. So this is the correct way. Okay, items equals cake, that will not compile. We have to del delete that one. And if you want to copy a string of letters into a character array, then you must use the string copy function to do that. So this will reset items to the word cake and letters to the word lake. And then we will go through the if statement and we'll see what we get then. Will it be less than? Will it be greater than? Will it be equal? Well, let's see what we get. Now let's look at the output. So I won't bore you with uh, all the other stuff I've typed in already. You've seen it many times. So let's move on down to the comparisons of the, uh, the if statements we have for items and letters using cake and lake. So when we do the compare, when we go through this code here, it turns out that we get a negative 1 back from the compare. And what that means is that cake is less than lake. Okay, so we print out uh, this C out statement here. So items, which is cake, is less than um, lake, which is stored in letters. So you can see they're alphabetical, right? So C comes before L. So that means that when you have a string like this and you're comparing these two series of uh, characters, that's the way the comparison is done. It's alphabetical. Now, uh, let's continue through our long list of examples I have here. We're going to move down and we're going to work with the um, uh, array alphabet. So let's move the system pause further down. So I'll just cut it from here and paste it down here somewhere Okay, after, before we get to case number two. So let's look at these. And the purpose of this is I want to initialize the character array alphabet. So if you look at the top again, we had an uninitialized character array called alphabet, and it was set to 27. So now 
let's initialize it to the letters of the alphabet. So let's scroll down to that case, and we will initialize the array, and then we will print it out. And I've already got the C out statement here to print it out once we're finished. So let's add some code here for case number one that will initialize the character array. So let's paste in the code to do that. And look at what's going on here. We just are going to go through each index. K goes 0 up to 25, K++. Plus plus. Then the index alphabet sub K goes 0 to 25. And I set it to K plus 97. Well, what on earth is that? If you look up the ASCII code for an uppercase A, I'm sorry, a lowercase A, it's going to be 97. Okay, so 97 is the ASCII code for a lowercase a. So let me put that in, ASCII code for little a. Now, what does that do? Well, I can't put 97 in here because my alphabet array is initialized, I'm sorry, it's dimension 27, so 97 would not be a correct index for that. But I want to store at index number 0 the letter A. So this is the way I can do it. I can store the ASCII code in there. Now to begin with, K is equal to 0. So when I have alphabet sub 0, that's equal to 0 plus 97, or it's just 97 and it stores the ASCII code for lowercase a. When we go through the loop again, K will go to 1, so alphabet index 1 will be 1 plus 97, or 98, and that's a lowercase b. So this loop, as we proceed all the way through, it's going to put the ASCII codes 97, 98, 99, 100, all the way up for the code for little z into our alphabet array. Okay, Then we will print out the alphabet array here. Now let's run the program. Let's compile it and run it. Here's the output. Let's look at the output. And uh, I've already typed in all the inputs we needed for all those cases up above. So we jump all the way down to case one. That's what we're concerned about right here. All right, so we use the for loop, and we print out the alphabet, and look what we get. We do get A through Z, lowercase. Then look at this stuff. Now, that extra garbage is showing up again, and then we have cake showing up over here. All right, well, how do we stop that? Remember that we did not have a backslash zero in the array. We didn't put that in anywhere. So when I try to print this out, then the C out statement is going to keep going through memory locations until it finds a memory location that's all zeros, which it interprets as an end of string character. So it keeps plugging along until it finds something, and there, there is a backslash zero after cake, so that's why it stops here. But we don't want that. We don't want this to happen. So as part of our loop, we should also include the backslash zero character to terminate the string. So I'll, let's go ahead and put that in here. So we'll paste it in right here. And this sets the next index, which is going to be 26, to backslash zero. This will terminate our character array correctly. So when you're working with these character arrays, this is the kind of thing you have to be careful about. So now, this, well, when we print out the 26 letters, it will encounter the backslash zero, and then it will not print anything further. So let's demonstrate that. So we can look at the output. And this time, we just get the nice list of lowercase alphabetic characters, A through Z. So by appending that backslash zero after the Z, we don't get all that other garbage we saw in the previous example. Now, let's look at another way to do the same thing. Case number two. Then we're going to initialize alphabet, but this time we're going to use the actual characters instead of the ASCII codes. So let's put the code in to do that. So we'll paste that in here. And we have another for loop. Let's move our system pause down. So cut it from here and paste it before case three and take out some space up here. Case two, initialize the alphabet using characters. It looks almost the same as what we did up above. We still have the for loop, we have the um, backslash zero at the bottom, but instead of using 97 up here, we can actually use the character itself. 
So we can use the character and we can add the character onto this integer k. So that may seem really odd that you can do that. So k goes from 0 to 25 and we add 1 each time. We go through the loop, but instead of putting in the ASCII code, we put in the actual ASCII character here. And that does work just fine. So let's run the let's build the program, run it, and we'll see that this does indeed work. Now we have the output, so let's bring it over here. And I'll jump down to case one and case two again. So you can see the output. So here we initialized the array with the alphabet, so that worked fine. And in case number two, we did the same thing. So both of them work. You might think, well, okay, why is uh, case two might be the same thing as that one? Okay, well, you might be right, but let me show you that it's not the case. We'll just we'll initialize it with the uppercase letters instead of the lowercase letters this time. So let's run the program again, and let's do that. So what I'm doing, and uh, I'm just replacing lowercase a with uppercase a for case number two. Now we have the output. So when I bring that over, then uh, you can see what we what we have, right? So in case number one, we initialize the array with lowercase letters and we output them to the screen. Case number two, we initialize them using uppercase letters, and that's different. We print those to the screen. So here's a technique you can use. It seems uh, kind of weird, but as it turns out, if you have a single character, then there's an ASCII code that corresponds to that character. An ASCII code is an integer, so it kind of makes sense that a character and an integer can be interchanged. How about that? Well, let's look at another way to do it. Let's uh, go do case number three. And how are we going to do that? Well, let's paste the code in and let's see. So let's paste the code here. And that's not the code I wanted to paste. Let's go get the actual code I want to paste. Try that again. We have another for loop. This time, the for loop is using the actual letters in the for loop itself. So that's another way that you can do this. And let's look at what's happening. In this case, I'm going to let k equal the letter a to begin with. I'm using the actual ASCII encoded value here. So I'm putting the letter in with the single quotes on each side, but that really is going to be the number 97, which is the ASCII code for the letter a. We then can let z be the terminating letter. So look at this. For k equals a, k less than or equal to z, then we want to continue to go through the loop. So in effect, k starts with 97, and it continues until it gets to the code for z. And then we can increment k just like we did before. The indexing is a little different. If k is going to start with number 97, then we can't just use k by itself inside this index. We need to have indices 0 through 25 in here, inside the square brackets. So we accomplish that by taking the value of k and we subtract a from that. So whenever we have, when we're starting out with index number 0, k starts with a, which is 97. We subtract 97 from k, giving us 0. And then we store the value 97 in here as the value for that. Okay, D did you get that? So this index is going to be k minus a. First time through, a and a minus a minus a is 0. The second time through, k is going to go to b, or the ASCII code for b, which is 98. So we essentially have k is the letter B minus A, that gives us the index 1. So when it's B, when k is B, that's the same as 98. We subtract the 97, which is A, and we store the value 98 into our array, and that is the letter B. So how about that? So then, this is kind of a uh, unique and um, kind of fun way, I think, to, to use these characters as an index into an array. So you can use this in your for loop like that, and by doing a little math in here to make sure that your indices are within range, then you can also use the, the uh, ASCII encoded versions as well as the numbers themselves in here. Well, when we're done with that, we need to print out the character array. So let's go ahead and 
Let's print that out. So I'm just going to use a loop to print it out this time and use, instead of using a cout statement. But there's one thing that I did miss up here. I need to put the terminator after the last letter. So I'm going to grab that line of code up there and I'm going to put it in down here. I'll paste that in. But K now is, is going 97 to some big number, so I can't do that. So I'll need to just, just use the index 26 right here. So that will put the backslash zero after all the letters in the array. And when I print it out, then it'll be just fine. Okay, so I'm just deciding to uh, demonstrate again that you can print out a character array one letter at a time. So this is going to print out, print out the alphabet after it's initialized up here in case number three. But it's going to print them out in a different way. We're going to print them out all on the same line. We'll set the width of two, and we'll print out each character. And then that will be that. So let's go ahead and let's compile the program and demonstrate case number three. Now let's look at the output. So let's bring the output window over. And here's case number three. So you can see we really did initialize the array and we did print it out. And uh, I, I printed it out differently than the other two cases. So you can see that that really is case number three. And we used that um, the for loop up here in order to initialize the array. So this may be something very handy that you can use in the future. All right, now let's, uh, let's finish up this video with just one more little example. So down at the bottom, I've got this comment that says, characters can be integers and integers can be characters. Well, let's, uh, let's put in um, some code here. Let's paste this in. And I have CH4 set to 97. I have CH5 set to Z. Now let's go back up to the top and look at CH4 and CH5. So scroll, scroll, scroll. I have uh, CH1, 2, 3, and 4. Those are all just character variables. But I have a short integer as the type for CH5. Okay, so CH5 is an integer. The others are characters. So when I set, sorry about the scrolling. So when I set CH4, which is a character, to the number 97, then it's okay to do that. That will compile. And that is the ASCII code for a lowercase a. But I'm using an integer to set a character type. Alternately, this CH5, that's a short integer. I can use this single quote and a character a single quote to set the value of this short integer using an actual character. So these, uh, the characters and the uh, integers are kind of interchangeable here. Now let's print out CH4 and CH5 to uh, see what we get. So here's our C out statement. So let's print out CH4. CH4 equals, we'll print it out. And CH5 equals, we'll print CH5 out. So let's build a program, run it, and see what the output looks like. Well, here's the output, so let's bring it over. And you can see that CH4, pull it down a little bit. So CH4 prints out A. So I set CH4 to 97. That's the ASCII code for an A. CH4 is a type character, so it really did print out the character A. In the other case, CH5, that is an integer type, a short integer, but when I set it to Z, it prints out the integer value, so it gives me the code for an uppercase Z, which is 90. So um, you can interchangeably use these characters and integers with each other. Now, if you wanted to print out the letter Z instead of the code 90, I will show you how you can do that. We can use what we call our type cast operator, and we can add in this character type, which precedes CH5. So CH5, you know, that was an integer, but we can temporarily change the type from an integer to a character by doing this. So this is our type casting operation. So I'll add this in. We'll print out CH5 again. We'll convert it to a character, and then we'll print it out. And this time you'll see it'll actually print out the uh, capital letter Z. Let's bring in this output. And you will see now that since I've added that in, we get the letter A printed out here like we did before. We have the code for ASCII, uh, 90 for uppercase Z. And then when I convert that to a character, we actually get the letter Z printed out over here. 
So if you have a integer that contains a character code, you can temporarily convert that to a character, and it will print the letter to the screen instead of the uh, instead of the actual uh, number that represents that character. All right. Well, um, this has been a pretty long survey of things you can do with character arrays. So let's uh, let's go take a break, and we'll stop the video here. And we'll come back in uh, future videos, and we'll look at how characters and strings relate to each other. So that's it for this video.